three, two, one. This week's Epic Epoch update is really very simple. Every single article I published this week is about the same thing. I went on a Serpent Seed of Satan Palooza. That's what I put on this week. A workshop, as it were. Uh, basically what happened is that one of the most, at least on a popular level, promulgators of the Serpent Seed of Satan theory online today is Zen Garcia. And I made a comment to one of his videos and he was kind enough to write back like a six page reply. So I wrote a very detailed reply to him and in turn he wrote another three pages back to me, which I really and truly appreciate because, you know, most people or some people, um, especially online, unfortunately, they kind of have a Twitter mentality. They think that there's a silver bullet one-liner for everything. And so it was great that he wrote back uh, in so much detail. So the issue is I had prepared all these articles about the Serpent Seed of Satan theory. But in order to reply to Zen, um, and so that I wouldn't write 50 pages, I needed to be able to say, okay, this particular detail of the topic I covered in this article. That particular topic I covered in that, in that article. So I could focus on replying directly and not go on all these little side trails. So what I had to do is post a bunch of articles this week, four of them, and there's more coming up, so that by the end of next week I'll be able to post my reply to Zen. Um, with all due regard and discretion, with all due respect to those more learned than myself, I must say I've been thoroughly disappointed with Zen Garcia's um, comments on the issue. I'm afraid that his logic and his theologic, that is his logical replies and his theological replies are actually very poor and it kind of shows you how problematic this theory is. Now the serpent seed of Satan theory holds that the original sin in the Garden of Eden was that Eve had sex with Satan. Whether in the form of a serpent or you know what have you, there's different ideas by different authors. So that her eating the forbidden fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was all metaphorical for Eve having sex with Satan, which makes Cain the literal son of Satan, who literally contains satanic genetics, and therefore the line of Cain are people who contain satanic genetics. At least that's Zen's view. Different uh, theorists, different serpent seed of Satan theorists, put different people in these camps, okay? So Zen would say the seed line battles, the bloodline battles, the enmity between the seeds, the woman's seed and the serpent seed, is between the line of Cain and the line of Seth. Others would say that it's the uh, Calvinistically saved versus the Calvinistically condemned. Others would say that it's the white Aryans versus the Jews. So basically anyone you don't like, you place in the camp of the seed line or blood line of Satan. Now, this week I wrote one called E.W. Bullinger's quote-unquote The Serpent Seed of Genesis. I'm sorry, The Serpent of Genesis 3, close quote, which is a sermon of his. And he's not technically um, in the same serpent seed camp as Zen Garcia, but he has some interesting things to say about the issue, so I wrote on him. Another one was Arnold Murray and the Serpent Seed of Satan Theory. And then Clifton A. a. Amaheiser, Serpent Seed of Satan Theory. So that way I've covered uh, what different people have to say about it, how they approach the issue, and who they claim is involved, what scriptures they appeal to to support their claims. And so one of the articles was, Did Jesus Teach the Serpent Seed of Satan Theory in John 8? So that's one thing I've been doing, 
is looking at the scriptures to which they appeal and actually demonstrating that they fail each and every time. Uh, Serpent Seed of Satan theorists, they like to appeal to supposed mysteries in the Bible that can only truly be explained by their theory. And I'll give you one of the major ones. Why was the curse on Eve for eating forbidden fruit pain in childbirth or increased pain in childbirth? Right? If the ethic of the Bible is basically eye for an eye, so the punishment fitting the crime, what on earth does increased pain in childbirth have to do with picking a fruit off of a tree and eating it, right? So that shows you that uh, the punishment was increased pain in childbirth of Cain, and maybe thereafter as well. So that must mean that the original sin, the crime, was actually something to do with sex. Well, the fact is, oh, for that matter, by the way, what does Adam's curse have to do with his crime, right? With his sin. He did the same. He ate the forbidden fruit of the tree. So does that mean um, Adam had sex with Satan as well? Okay, and <laughs> wow, there you go, right? You have to apply both. And what does his curse have to do with it, right? That before, basically, in a manner of speaking, Adam was just a gardener, right? He just kind of tended the garden. But thereafter, he actually had to work the land. He actually had to work it in order to get it to produce. So what does that have to do with it? Well, the Bible all but is waving a giant flag and saying, hey, look over here. I mean, I'm telling you the answer. I'm explaining to you why. And uh, so I went ahead and explained that in this series. Maybe one of these days I'll do a video just explaining all of it. Because, you know, the, what happens is after you write like, I don't know how much I've written on this, maybe 15, maybe 17 articles on this. It kind of gets um, to the point where it's hard to put it all in a nutshell. And especially if you actually want to detail succinctly the answers to all these issues. So that's the four articles I published this week. I'm draw, uh, looking at the scripture for what it is telling to us instead of forcing it to say what we want, right? So without taking text out of context to make a pretext for a proof text, we let the Bible speak for itself. We compare the claim, the Satan seed of Satan theory, against what the Bible says and see what lines up with the Bible and what does not. So there you have it.